Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Safe Trading Frank. This is uh, our regular uh, uh, a weekly market uh, and stock update free webinar uh, for all members. This session is being recorded and will be uploaded to the YouTube channel for uh, uh, viewing by uh, all other um, members who cannot attend at this point. Today is July 27th, 2017 approximately 8 11 p.m eastern standard time full disclosure this is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice and we shall begin so wanted to do this um important uh important uh webinar uh to share with all members on on, particularly on these very sudden movements that we see in the markets, which at any at, at, during market hours might seem extremely um, are, are are very amplified during market hours, to say the least. But we want to put it put it in perspective of what's going on. As you all know by now, all my charts are real time. They're there to help navigate people, understand what's happening in the background and with individual stocks. So they're not completely falling apart, uh, despite the massive price fluctuations that we generally tend to see when markets suddenly move back and forth. And that applies both on the long side and the short side. OK, um, so just just to, just the nature of the beast. We call it volatility. It is volatility. And I call it tactical volatility or structured volatility. So we, I want to put these things in perspective. Now, the other thing to, uh, before I go any further, uh, I want to mention uh, that all of you uh, by now should know that all my visual alerts, i.e. tactical charts, are available for full viewing on the media section of the media section of the Clue to Say Trading feed. All you have to do is click and then just scroll down. So every single one of the charts that I've posted, all real charts, no fake charts, all the real deal is posted on the media section. All you got to do is go ahead and uh, and scroll through, find it, take a look at it, what I'd recommended where, and you'll certainly see the huge outperformance uh, overall on um, on my uh, uh, on my uh, precision real time alerts. And when you put this in perspective and look at it, let's say you want to look at a chart of AutoZone uh, from four days ago. It puts it, it, it puts the whole picture um, in front of you where I had recommended it. The stock fell on one day, approximately six, seven, eight, nine points, and then rose 22 points from that level just in the past 48 hours. Okay, so. Just the way it goes. So it's it's very very important that you use the media section to go through uh, the previous charts and 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 uh, and look through um, what was alert, uh, what was put through, um, so that you can um, so you can basically um, do some self learning. And uh, because when things are moving fast, which they always do, we tend to forget what the original chart uh, alerts were. And the media section on the Clueless Day Trading Twitter feed certainly will help you put that in place. Enough said. Okay. So let's uh, um, let's put things in perspective on today's market action. The Dow Jones ended the day up 85 points. The, Na <laughs> the Nasdaq ended the day down 40 points, approximately 0.63%. The Dow Jones was up 0.4% or 0.39%, 85 points. The S&P 500 was barely down. It was only down 0.1%. The Russell 2000 took a hit with the NASDAQ, was down 0.6%. And the, and the NDX, which is basically the NASDAQ 100, was down approximately 0.57%, which is in line with the NASDAQ composite. Okay. So, so let's see what's going on here. So we're going to go directly into the technicals. But before I do that, here's my hunch as to what happened during the day, because it happened very quickly. We all know that. Okay. 
we started the day on an extremely strong note. We had multiple, multiple winners from earnings, large movements on the on the earnings trades, ER trades as we call it. We had um, we had uh, uh, our our swing stocks moving rapidly, uh, Alibaba, uh, you name it, every one of them, Tesla, um, Netflix, Priceline, which has been a nice swing trade for people who uh, are, are, you know, basically uh, were holding it. Um, and it was huge. Facebook certainly was a huge winner. So the first thing that I do when we see a gap open in the market, and it's extremely important that all of you, especially newer members like, you know, the, the, that are present right now, that you read my comments and my pre-market charts very quickly. Because one of the things that I always do, and I've always done, regardless of anything, is if we have a gap up open on the market, futures up anywhere north of five, six, seven, eight, nine points, or even four, five, six points, and we are long the day before on the SPX calls, on the on on the on the earnings trades with Facebook, you know, just picking out examples that we real time alerts that I've given. Um, then the first thing you want to do is take out the majority of your profits, regardless of whether the market's going to climb higher from there. Because the point is that within the first 15 minutes, the market could suddenly, after a gap open, turn. And it's just the way it is. It's the nature of the beast. Now, why is that? It's quite simple. The so-called smart money, and we consider clueless state trading smart money, okay? And we certainly don't have the wherewithal to trade billions of dollars. But the reality is they are positioned themselves the day before, say, for example, and and uh, uh, um, 26, uh, 26 this year uh, at these levels. and And then you get this big gap open in the market, okay, up six, seven, eight points. So you're going to take profits. It's really as simple as that. And that's the first thing that I put through, that take large profits down or sell gap ups. What happens after that? You can always re-enter. Or you don't need to sell everything. Maybe if you have uh, a few more than one contract, um, or when you talk about options, um, then sell half of it or more. I generally tend to, I, I, it, a nice gap up opens. I get nice profits. I take almost all of it down, leave a little bit in there. Okay, so that's that's a rule of thumb. That's just the smartest way of doing things. If, you know, then if the market is just jettisoning forward, which it certainly can and has done many many times, it opens up and just it opens up, gaps up, and then just kind of takes a little bit of a breather and then takes another leg up. It's okay because your position down here, you're up a good let's say 40, 60, 80 uh, percent overnight uh, uh, returns. You take some profits. It's really simple. I don't need to go into it too much. And then after that, if you reevaluate, you have cash on the side, which you certainly should have, regardless of what size account you have. You always have to have cash on the side. And um, and and then and and then you re-enter and you position yourself, and then you deal with the market. So the bottom line is the first part of the day uh, before the uh, uh, before the sudden. Um, Algo HFT, that's algorithmic high frequency trading programs that hit the market. It happened so quickly, I'll be the first one to admit, I didn't get a chance to react on the short side because normally I do. I had I had some powerful, powerful profits on multiple fronts. And it wasn't just me, many other people did too. And so when the sell-off started approximately around noontime, because that's pretty much when it started, suddenly with one large drop, and the first drop was we noticed Amazon dropping from up being what 20 some points um, or 13 points, 15 points. Amazon was 1052 yesterday, hit 1083 today. It was up 31 points. Okay. I didn't have a large position in Amazon from my swing trades. I had a little bit running, but that's okay. That little bit was, you know, from last week. So you can imagine how much it went up. And uh, so so I'm okay with that. I'm not chasing it. If you notice, I didn't mention one single time during the day 
when the markets were rushing forward to buy Amazon? Because I'm here to see what will be my maximum reward with minimum risk. Because that is the essence of trading. So I didn't mention anything because this thing was just going hog wild. And we'll look at Amazon chart in a second, which is pretty perfect as to what I said it was going to pull back and what it's going to do. But anyway, that's a different story. So when this sudden thing happens, this flash crash, my feeling is, my feeling is that somebody out there, some hedge fund, got got hold of the Amazon earnings that they were going to basically miss their EPS number, earnings per share number. And they decided to unload their Amazon position. When one hedge fund starts doing it, it's a ripple effect. It's like a butterfly effect, okay? Then the next one goes. Stops get triggered. People who don't want to sell are automatically taken out because of the, of, the, of the sudden drop. And hedge funds are highly, highly leveraged, meaning they, uh, for every dollar, they're borrowing another five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars worth of capital, right? So when you're that leveraged and you suddenly fall, uh, and a stock suddenly starts to drop because once started the uh, started the sell off, then you're automatically going to get taken out because margin for us retail traders is two to one, right? We can borrow four times. I mean, yeah, in our day trading accounts, we can borrow four times our money, but that's only for day trading purposes. But generally speaking, hedge funds can borrow up to can up to 20 times so for every hundred dollars they can borrow you know they could uh, they can trade two thousand dollars so when you're that leveraged and things start to move the machines start to you know uh, uh take control which they're always in control uh then you have a, a big ripple effect what we call a waterfall decline right every single time it's not the first time so let's put things in perspective. So that's my hunch that that's what really happened. The other thing I noticed was Nvidia was climbing nicely, pull back all within the framework of, and do look up the Nvidia chart, the tactical chart that I put out there. And that started to pull back too. Now one of, uh, so so that, you know, to couple that with Amazon dropping and Nvidia is a pretty large stock, heavily traded. You got pressure on the market. I noticed the banks really weren't doing much. It wasn't like Goldman Sachs was down $7. So it wasn't a credit issue. And I mentioned that. So if there's no, if, if it's not a financial banking credit issue, tech sell-offs are not that dangerous to the markets. They're standard panicky day trading type of things. Just the way when they ramp up, they can ramp down. So this started to take effect and just, you know, by that time we had locked in some very large profits. That's fine. But we still were entering some positions, swing positions. So the, every everything gets hit at the same time. What I find amazing sometimes when, and this is something that all you uh, newer traders or all traders for that matter, you have to understand markets are full of ETFs, exchange traded funds. Okay which own, which are baskets of all these stocks that we own on each sector. So when ETFs also start to cascade and start selling or buying, because these type of things have, on the, on, have happened, this is the same thing as where the shorts get completely decimated. So this is where the longs got hit, right? The same type of move. It's the same underlying movement. You're getting short squeezed here. And you're basically getting the longs that are getting uh, hit here. So ETFs, there are thousands and thousands of ETFs in the market, exchange-traded funds. So they cause an amplified effect when these sudden movements happen. So what I find amazing a lot of the time, that a member or a trader will come in and say, oh, look at that. You know, They just mentioned one stock that's getting hit, as if that stock is trading in isolation of the market. The market is pulling back the NASDAQ, the QQQs, the NASDAQ 100, the tech sector is pulling back sharply. Amazon dropping 20 points in two minutes 
everything is going to get hit. So it's still, I still scratch my head when pe some people comment, and I'm not blaming, you know, I'm not here to blame anyone. I'm just trying to teach you guys things that, oh, look at that. That stock's getting hit. And I retort back whenever I have time. Because then I, I, on days like today, I'm working triple time, not even double time to, to show you guys what's going on, how to handle things and stuff like that as humanly possible. So I find it and I, 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 I respond back, hey, the whole sector is getting down. Why are you just looking at one stock? Now, some people say, well, that's because that's the one I own. Well, it doesn't matter. You have to understand that when the whole market is cascading down, then everything is going to get hit. So it's it's such a simple thing here. Um, and, and again, what can I say? To try to change your mental calibration, to look at the market as a larger entity instead of looking at one stock and saying, oh, that stock's down. Well, that stock's down because the market's down. Okay. My favorite term, enough said. So saying all that, let's keep things in perspective here. And this chart is just absolutely brilliantly precise. It has been precise all the way from down here. Let me just minimize this so it maximizes the, uh, the actual body of the chart. And this one was the Trump Jr. fiasco, right? The, with the Russian lawyer. These were all the other, this was a massive flash crash, massive. And that was back on the 29th of, uh, of June, 29th or 30th of June. That was a tech, uh, tech crash. Seems like years ago, it was just only a couple of days ago. That was on the 29th. So that was a big one, you know, big one. Again, technology. That was another one, large one. That was another one large one that was another one that was the latest one which was the ultimate buying opportunity they're all buying opportunities they all made us a, a, a very nice money um over the next 24 to 48 hours no one can deny that big hammer reversals big hammer reversals i put big green thumbs in there can't get any more you know simpler than that for people to you know to to Notice them. Big hammer reversals. This is a smaller one. Okay. And big buying opportunities. Minor hammer reversal. Whichever the case. You can clearly see here that the machines, when they start operating, they're going to go. They're not going to wait around for you to feel good or feel bad. They're just going to run with it off very specific levels. This is the face of volatility. This ain't grandpa's market. So the more you guys work, the more you guys are with Clueless A trading, the more you're going to accept this reality, the more you're going to manage your trades better. And there is no way you can manage your trades when you have a flash crash. You can buy in at the lowest like many of my traders did today. And I'm very proud of them. They scalped 60%, 70%, 90%. On these on these hammer reversal uh, uh, alerts that I that I put through, and good for them. And then myself, I did some of that too, but I wasn't that quick. I mean, I wasn't really that impatient to like get out of things. I I, I put some of my swing trades uh, and lowered my cost. Alibaba, Nvidia, because based on my past experience, and as you can clearly clearly see here. As clear as daylight, that the markets have had sharp reflex bounces off these type of climactic sell-offs does not mean we're going to make a new high. It simply means we have a reflex bounce in place. You got to play those reflex bounces. They are worth 60, 80, 100, 200% plus on SPX, RUT, and individual stock options on the upside so once we created this and i'm not going to uh, 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 keep on repeating and harping over this part of the market that much because i've already covered that in my previous video cast but once we went went out of that and we had this big move up and then we broke out this was back around the 23rd of june and we broke out again around the 13th or 14th of july right there that's why you have this breakout level. Read, breakout level. 
this line. Okay, so we broke out, we came and retested. Then we broke out again. So that's the breakout level number two, right there, right this zone. That's why it says breakout level. So what markets generally do, and I mentioned all the possibilities of what markets can do or not do. Listen to my previous video cast. Listen to the ACS coaching that I made free for 24 hours, which will shut down tonight because those are for paid students. And, uh, and uh, um, all of you guys are here, uh, so, uh, so that's good. But anyway, review that because I, I think some of you missed that, uh, missed being there. So the bottom line is, and this, is, by the way, is the real-time futures that you're seeing in action. So futures, I believe, are down right now approximately five points. And that's why you're seeing this, you know, that there it is. So anyway, so what the markets did in its own funny, weird way is they went, came back and retested that breakout level. T retesting of breakout levels is almost a mandatory function of stock markets to see if that is the short term or intermediate term support. If we break this, we're gonna come down here. It's no magic here, okay? And the breakout level in this zone will get retested. Now that's, that's quite a drop in the sense that from where we closed at, approximately 2470 let's say all the way down here to 2445 you're talking about 25 points on the S&P so you're talking about roughly 150 points on the Dow from here to here can that happen sure it can will it happen tomorrow I don't think so but it sure can there could be some overnight news which are not not conducive to the market but given where we are right now Given where we are right now, this is what I think is going to happen. This is my pred predictive forecast, is we're going to hold this level where we bounced from. We might come back and retest it. We will come back and retest it after hours. It's happening right now. Futures are down about five and a quarter, five and a half, because foreign markets are opening. So they're kind of taking the cue from what happened this afternoon. Remember, the global financial marketplace is all interlinked and global capital moves back and forth in minutes from one market to another so that's why the, so that's why uh, most of the times our reaction uh, is to european markets at the first part of the day and then we then we take over the rain and move on from there and global markets they take the cue from us depending on how we what we did now now, given the fact that Amazon is down 38 points, um, obviously there is a tech, uh, uh, there's pressure on technology stocks globally, and that's why that's part of it is being reflected on the S&P 500. So giving you some broader picture on how the game actually works, okay? So we could very well come back and test this and then create a mini W type of pattern, which would be probably the perfect thing. In fact, tomorrow morning, if we open down, let's say five or six or seven points, and we hold this bottom, we hold this bottom, we could create a pretty powerful move. And again, I've shown these quite a few times, and they've happened exactly, almost a couple of times a week actually. We very powerful move up towards the 2480 level, or up to the 2476 level remember we're talking about the futures numbers here whichever the case this looks like a triple top here so if this triple top is attacked again it's possible that it breaks out so when you look at things in perspective these movements that we saw back on the end of june at the end of june then in july first part of July, these are far bigger in size and magnitude, right, than what happened today. And this is what, this is where, this is where, when, when I keep um, posting this chart, you guys better understand what you're looking at, because you can't get any simpler than this. The lines are drawn to perfection. This is what, these are the levels the markets will either bounce off or break down. 
and you have to if you want to be you know that's another thing i want to remind uh, traders a lot of smaller traders want to play this game of hardcore volatility which is exactly what the market says well you better be equipped for it if you're not equipped for it then do not trade days like today yes you're going to miss out on some humongous gains but what can you do if you don't have the wherewithal to do it for no fault of your own then don't trade you cannot play the machines without the right tools and if you're busy that day because you have a full-time job then don't mess around with heavy volatility. You can buy some swing trades, sit on it. My swing trades have a very high accuracy rate. I know Dan keeps on asking me about CARA. I own CARA. But if you make that your primary dominant position and you're obsessed with what the stock is doing and it's down 72 cents today, without changing any of the overall swing directional bias. And I'm not just ask, saying about them, but it's, it's happened to other people too. You can't do anything about it. I don't care how small a capital that you're dealing with. You can always spread your risk. You can always spread your risk. If you're going for that lottery ticket and that moonshot, the only lottery tickets you get are in times like this and possibly on times like this. But if you don't have the cash to add at those uh, during in, in this type of zone, well, nothing I can do because I can't control, you know, what you're doing or, you know, how much money you have and stuff like that. All right. I just want to make that very clear. So you cannot be, you know, swing trades when it comes to the biotech side. And I want to make this very clear with everyone. Swing trades when it comes to the biotech side. They don't move like normal, normal markets. Markets can be up a lot. Biotechs are down. When I was buying Biogen, nobody bothered. The calls were two dollars. The calls went to seventeen and a half in a matter of ten days. That's a swing trade. The same thing with uh, 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 what do you call Puma Biotech. Calls are at a buck and a half, buck seventy-five. They went to four dollars. Didn't take that long. Clovis. Uh, oncology clvs it was up actually five today i don't even look at it that much so biotechs have their own way allergan a beautiful swing stock from many many points ago so what i'm putting out the swing stocks but specifically on the biotech side you got to have this patience and the wherewithal to sit with it that's all there's nothing you can do about it if you want to day trade it that's only if it jumps big that particular day. Do not expect biotech stocks to trade like Tesla, which moves every single day. Or Google, or Amazon, or, or even Facebook. Do not expect the biotech stocks to trade like that. They have a completely different characteristics and speed. And when they wake up, they really go. So I hope I made that very clear to everyone. Got to differentiate between swing trades, day trades, and even within the day trades, you have powerful high momentum movers that we trade daily. Not every one of them daily, but at least a bunch of them. And then you got the different type of more specialty ones like the restaurant stock, uh, stocks like Chipotle. Um, and then we trade some of these newer biotechs, IPOs that came public that are up close to 60, 70, 80 percent in a matter of 10 days. Who gives you a stock? Forget an option, a stock that goes up 80 percent in two weeks. But no one bothered. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just stating facts because I'm putting this through. AKCA. My alerts were around 840, 850, 860. AKCA today hit, or yesterday hit 1630, and it's still close, close to 16, $15 today. So it doubled 100%. Forget about 80%, 100% on your money. I will ask people to buy KALA, which is another biotech, Cala Pharmaceuticals, that came public two days ago. 
at $17. 1705 to be exact. The stock hit $20.25 today. So if you can't handle the volatility because you don't have the wherewithal or you just don't, you know, you just you just can't do it. Most people can't do it. That's fine. It's hard for me on a day like today. So forget about you guys. So buy a little bit of those stock and just sit there. Make some money that way. Because when I'm putting those uh, those IPOs uh, uh, out for people to alert them to buy, I'm not just randomly doing. I'm doing some background check. I'm liking it. I'm putting it through. Nine out of ten times when I told people to buy those IPOs on the day of the IPO, buy the common, they have been up substantially within the next two weeks. After that, the market takes over. Before that, they move on the momentum of that particular company. That's it. So let's go back to go back to where we are right now. As far as I can see, and I'm going to draw one more line here. These are parallel channels. There. Beautiful. Every one of them match. This this channel here is is basically where the market bounced off. Look, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel four. Every one of those endpoints were met. So what we're doing right now is this is channel one. Let's say this is one, two, three. So what we're doing is we were in, we were uh, uh, we were up to channel three, right? We were in this in channel three. We came down to channel two, still made a sharp move up within this within this band, within this channel. We broke below now and we should excuse me hold channel 2 channel 3 excuse me the first channel channel 1 if we break below that we're going to come down and retest the breakout level number 1 as i put it out there this is kid stuff i mean looking at this chart here honestly okay it's not hard to understand this is very very symmetrical and they are very very precise because the machines are very precise I'm just basically reading off what they're printing in front of me. If we break this, we're going to test this support level here, this red line at 2440 around there. If we break this, we're going to test this big fat downtrend line highlighted as a big fat downtrend line right there at 2425. And if we break that, we're going to come back and test 2420. And below that is 2400. Now, will this whole thing happen in one single go? Never. It just doesn't work like that. Every time it hits a certain support level, it's going to attempt to bounce. And once it, you know, it attempted a nice bounce here, the S&P calls the cheap ones because the other ones I told people to basically sell and roll them out. So, and then I said buy the 2500s. My average cost was 210. They fell to almost 50 cents, I believe. Let me give you an exact number. Bear with me one second. I was buying hands down because I saw the re hammer reversal. I acted as quickly as possible. Let me try to do this. This is August 4th. You have ample time left. Ample time. So, at the heart of the sell off, before the the market you know uh, a bit dropped below uh this uh this uh, uh this support the green line they were approximately a dollar or five i remember buying a bunch of them there and then i bought a whole bunch bear with me one second that's px And trying to get the exact uh, price. They went to somewhere around 60 cents. Because it's not directly in front of me. Okay. Um, and I bought more at 70 cents, 60 cents. And they closed at the close at almost a dollar fifteen. So oh, you almost got a 100% move from the bottom up. And my cost right now 
is slightly above one. So I'm almost even. So one more burp, and I have ample time. I have till next Friday, right, August 4th, to work those options because I do believe that the market wants to tag, as I've shown on my SPX charts, regardless of what happens today, happened today, at this point, it's still intact that the market wants to go to 2,500, the magnet. And we're only 150 points away from that. Trade management is not something I can teach you guys. I can only give you the tools. I can give you some sort of idea. Trade management is learn through your own experience and how quickly you can navigate things based on the visual roadmap that I'm putting in front of you. I just want to be very clear about that. Trade management is tough business, especially in very volatile markets. Everybody would like to get an easy answer. Well, I give you easy answers. I tell you where stocks are going to go or the market's going to go, and it goes there. So I can't make it any more easier. After that, you guys have to manage what you need to do. When it comes to options, it's harder because there's a time premium involved. There's, a, there's a intrinsic value. So you got to, if you believe that my charts are going to be right, you got to roll them out. You got to play for more time. I don't necessarily need to tell you exactly what you need to do every 5 or 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. You guys have to make some decisions on your own. So let's. So going back to it, that would be a ultimate buying opportunity down here because that would be a massive, massive W formation and a sweet buying opportunity where you're going to get a big bounce and that bounce would most probably be capped if we fell that hard, would most probably be uh, 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 stopped at resistance at the downtrend line. That's your downtrend line. Now. If it if it doesn't get all the way, I know. So it's not going to go straight down here unless there's a real climactic event on the on the credit market or something terrible happens on the political side um, or on the terrorist side, you know, um, um, on U.S. soil. So aside from that, um, we are looking at I'm looking at this move here. <coughs> this is a downtrend line here. Remember, red lines are downtrend lines. Not that hard to understand. If we get rebuffed there. We're going to come down here. Either we're going to try to attempt to break out again or we're going to fall. Now, I'm going to be showing this during the day. It's up to you to get the messaging and act accordingly. If, it, if we fall, the next level would be breakout level number one, retest. And that would be approximately around 24.51 or so um, on uh, um, approximately 24. Yeah, around 24.51 on, uh, on the thing. Um, on the minis, which which is roughly around 2455 or so on the S&P 500. And look at the symmetry. This is where we were. We broke out. That is quite symmetrical. So in the meantime, the bears will tell you that it's the end of the market. It's over. And it's, you know, and the, obviously the dogmatic bears, I'm not talking about tactical shorts. Tactical shorts, we have been there, we like it, we do it. But when these things happen, they were far more climactic and the market could have broken a lot lower than this mini little move that we got today. So just put things in perspective. These were all larger flash crashes, especially this one and this one and this one. And people tend to forget these. Because traders generally have very, very short memories. That's why you know I do these things to put things in perspective. They were far worse than the movement that we saw today. Now, saying all that, it is not something that we know exactly what will happen right now. But I still believe we're going to hold here, try to bounce. If not, we're going to come back and test here. Whichever the case, we should tag at least retest the highs that we saw today on the S&P 500 that was we actually hit a new high today at 2484 so 2481.69 is uh is the is, was the year high and we actually tagged 2484 so good good possibility that we we will will tag uh back 
at 2470, you know, 2484, if not 2490. Keep in mind, we closed at 2475. We're not too far away from there. This might look a little dramatic on a one hour chart, but honestly speaking, it's only a few points from where we, where we hit uh, uh, the all time highs. So that's one chart I want to show you. So when I'm, when I'm showing this in, in the picture, I hope you guys can see what I'm seeing. Uh, I know none of you will ever see what I see because I'm just clueless. You know, I do these, see things in a very, very different way, not because of my mental bias. It's because I'm truly robotic when I'm looking and trading my charts. And hopefully someday you guys will be like that too and you'll see the benefits of it. But so far, as far as I can see, I've explained to you what the downside is. I still believe we tag uh, uh, this level here, the 2490 level, which would basically mean around 2500 on the S&P 500. And I believe that happens by next week. As long as we are above this zone here and this zone here, specifically 2450, we should be okay. If not, we'll go short. And that short means that you have to be quick because there's another support level here and the market could have a hefty bounce from here, which brings me to my next next point here. If somebody believes that the market has completely broken, which I don't, um, then in that case, they could always buy some long dated puts and just sit on them and they're still going to make money. OK, so I'm just letting you guys know. So you can certainly do that. You can buy some puts all the way out to whenever, end of August, early September, and you can just sit there and wait for the market at its own time. In, be in between, don't look at the screen because there'll be days the market's going to be up 150, 200 points, 60 points, 70 points, and your puts are going to shrink. So as long as you're not watching it on a daily basis, you could buy, in my opinion, long dated puts going into the latter part of August and just sit there. Um, and you know, that's, that, that's completely up to you. Let's move on to another chart here, which is the one that I constructed today. Uh, it's a daily chart of the S and P 500, no futures S and P 500. And as far as I can, this is the simplest way of looking at it. I'm looking at the, your overall thing. I'm looking at the, um, uh, stochastics. I don't see any material damage whatsoever. None. If it breaks below the 80 level, then things start to, you know, cascade down a little bit. But I, as far as my trained eye uh, sees, I don't see it's it's just moving sideways. You know, anyone, everyone looks at things in, in a different way, and your eyes could be looking at something different. These are the channels that I drew, and at this point in time, we have a mid Bollinger here. We have a uh, we have a level here of 2455. Uh, and that looks like that would act as a major support. That was the breakout level, the 2455 level. That's the one that I showed you on this chart here, this one, okay? I'm sorry, this one, this breakout level, which is 2451, you can see that. And, and this is all technical talk. So this line here correlates to that, which is roughly around 2455. Am I clear on that? Yes, does the, the numbers, the number count make sense to you guys? I mean, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. 2451 yes. on the E-minis is roughly 2455. And that is a, you know, that was where you broke out of. So it's very, very possible to come down and test that. Very, very possible we'll come down and test that. And it can happen as early as tomorrow. So saying all that, will that be a buying opportunity? We'll see. I think it will. I think we get a bounce from here, but we shall see. Um, uh, these channels are, uh, 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 you, you're seeing what's going on here. Uh, so far, it's just a minor blip. We're not seeing this kind of very ugly bearish engulfing. Those are those big fat red ones which engulfed the previous bar, which reminds me, I hope everybody has taken the 15 minutes of their time, which I've repeatedly posted, went ahead and listened to the candlestick pattern video. I'm not gonna ask anyone if they have done or not. That's not my business. I'm not gonna do that anymore. But if you guys haven't done it, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. I mean, really huge, okay? It is a brilliant, 
robotic voice explaining candlestick patterns in the simplest manner and you guys are doing this on a daily basis you're seeing my charts it'll all make sense and if you guys still haven't done it it's up to you okay traders need to educate themselves everyone says i want to learn i want to learn and then when it comes to the actual learning part nobody wants to do it it's the same thing in school right everyone wants to get a a, a plus on on calculus but no one wants to make you sit there and grind and learn the you know uh, go through the uh, tough homeworks so it's the same old story so the candlestick pattern video has been tweeted several times more importantly it's on the youtube channel i found it to be fantastic and i suggest that all of you listen to it it's only 15 minutes i think 20 minutes and if you can spare that amount then i suggest you do not trade these type of volatile markets because every, i i live and breathe candlesticks i read them as much as i can and i read them pretty damn well so i don't freak out when you get these big drops and 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 then and and then the reversal happens um it's the same thing uh when things are on the top and i start to read the candles well enough said um so this this one here as a uh this one obviously is a much larger view the this channel here projects all the way up to uh, I would say this is more for for the year than anything else. Projects out to 2600. On the lower end, it at this point it has a major. Uh, the lower channel is a major support at around 2437. That's roughly 40 points from where we are right now. So multiply that by six. You're talking about roughly 250 points on the Dow. I believe that type of sell-off we should get right after the first week of august once that channel is violated we have a lower bollinger and a downtrend line uh a retest that's at 2407 and then of course we have uh, a serious support level here and the and and the uh um with that gap was filled but still it's like i i i kind of take the leeway of using it as a, as a repeat gap fill of 2354 so do the math here this is that august sell off that i'm looking for 2354 we're at 2475 if we go down 2354 that's 121 points multiply that by six that's a whopping 700 points on the dow which brings us down to 21,000. and they're all going to scream murder out there they're all going to say, this is it. This is the Great Depression starting again, blah, 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 blah. Believe me, I've gone through so many of these cycles. I hear the same old canned lines from the same old dogmatic, not tactical shorts, dogmatic bears and dogmatic shorts, the same old story, the world's falling apart, blah, blah, blah. Now, if circumstances change on the on the interest rate side, there's a very sharp rise in interest rates, not gradual rise, sharp rise in interest rates. If there's a credit issue overseas, if there is a political fallout here in the United States and there was there is no hard um, tax reform or infrastructure plans delivered, trust me, we can fall a lot more. But saying all that, the markets move on earnings. Three quarters of earnings, more than 75% of earnings so far out of the S&P 500 for, for, the, for the second quarter. Because those are the earnings that we're getting now, right? Second quarter earnings have been on the positive side. And these are real earnings, actual revenue growth, not just financial engineering, where they're trying to show some strong numbers by moving the balance sheet around and the income statement figures around, okay? Actual revenue growth. This is, this is good because there is a synchronized global growth, uh, a global recovery in motion, not just us. So U.S. companies are benefiting. It's really as simple as that. Okay, when Boeing can run up, run up another eight bucks. That's another great swing shot that I that uh, swing swing trade that I recommended two weeks ago, and re and mentioned it a couple of times. Didn't push it that hard in the past week or so, but Boeing has been mentioned several times. Go look at my Boeing charts when it was at 186, 189, 190, and we bought the 200 calls. And Boeing right now is at 241. That's Boeing, for God's sake. It's not Tesla. It's not Google. So when a company like Boeing 
can produce that type of results, you got to believe something's good going around the world. Anyway, that's, you know, that's just a simple way of looking at it. So, uh, again, so, uh, and then you had strong numbers from McDonald's and all these big old industrial giants hitting new highs. It's a, that's, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. So, um, so yeah, so do you see what's going on here? So, uh, and if you project out, you can go as high as 2680. Uh, but um, that's where we are. That's where we are. This, I believe, is uh, short term, is a uh, very important support between 2320 uh, and thing. But that's, you're talking 700 points down, right? Like I said, 700 points down. So we're not going to stay long 700 points down, that's for sure. Because once we attack this channel and we don't bounce the lower channel, I'm going short. And that short can bring us down, uh, uh, can get, get delivered, you know, very decent sums of money. Just stay tuned. I'm going to be putting out my alerts and uh, and we go from there. In the interim, we, 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 we see what, uh, you know, uh, what we're doing. Let's take a look at Tesla real quick. This is a perfect chart. Anybody who played this chart made money. Anybody. I don't need to explain this. It's self-explanatory. If somebody says, no, I don't quite understand that chart, I don't know what to say. You have a gap fill here. You have a gap fill there. Both of them were met. Then the stock fell because of the market and hit the upper end of the gap. You can see that how precise it is. Because I don't manipulate these things like, oh, it hit there, so I'm going to move my gap fill around. No, you can't move gap fills around. It's right there. There's your gap. There's your gap fill. And it's exactly what it did and bounced. Now it's going to bounce to the mid Bollinger right there, the red line, 340. You could trade the ranges. Trade the ranges. Trade 330 up to the lower gap, 347, 17 points. Make yourself happy. It's a choppy stock, no question about it. But it is so structured. Now, once it breaks out over this gap, it's going to be a very fast move to 371. Do I think, um, that's a just a gut feeling, that we are going to basically complete this pattern? Yes. Do I think Tesla can go back to 390? I don't think so. I think 370 acts as a major barrier for the stock. But just imagine buying the stock today, holding it for one week, two weeks, three weeks. And I believe their earnings are on Monday, right? I think their earnings are on Monday. You could very easily see 370 and a sudden sell-off. And that would be patterns, pattern completion. NVIDIA. So NVIDIA got hit today. Did it change my chart pattern? No. These are what algorithmic tactical charts look like. Not what's in your emotional head, like, oh my God, NVIDIA is down two bucks. It's the end of the world, you know, all that type of garbage. Because remember one thing, my job is to remain as focused and follow my discipline, which is tactical charts. I cannot bend to the whims or wishes or thoughts of retail emotional traders. If I did that, you guys would be completely toast. If I thought like most of you guys and acted like most of you guys, do you honestly believe I could have delivered this type of performance in this type of volatile market? I don't think so. And I don't think you guys would be around too because you'd be just like, this guy's doing the same stupid things that we do. I don't think that's what you want. So I try to be as objective and robotic as possible based on my picture. This to me, I know every level NVIDIA can go up or down, up or down, so I'm prepared for it. You have one gap here, which almost got kissed, and a big hammer reversal. This is a powerful stock. This is not AMD. This is not Micron. This is NVIDIA, artificial intelligence, hardcore gaming. They're in all kinds of stuff. They're using NVIDIA chips for Bitcoin. They're using AMD chips for Bitcoin too, but NVIDIA chips, because it's all about hardcore gaming. Anyone ever seen an NVIDIA machine? 
I mean, uh, GeForce card that are used in the gaming things, machines, no? Yes, no? Those things are like rocket ships. They power a computer. Trading computers use NVIDIA chips. Powerful. You need max performance. So here you have a very defined level, which I can see clearly right there. And I'm showing you the simple charts, not the, the thinkorswim charts or anything like that. Okay. A bounce brings me up towards 165. A further bounce takes me up to 169. Completes the pattern. I like to trade NVIDIA in staggered moves of anywhere from two to four dollars because the options move very nicely but this i think we get we hit the 165 level without a problem over the next couple of days i have august 4th i kept on buying all the way down lowered my cost and if i do see it slip to 156 which should act as a major support i will add more here if I see the 156 broken, that's a different story. I don't like shorting these stocks because I've tried doing that with Tesla and I've gotten burnt because they move so fast off these, off these precise uh, 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 supports. I just don't want to be there. Okay, so I would rather cost average down, wait patiently for the tactical bounces and sell, take some very nice profits as I show you guys all the time including this morning from yesterday and the day before nvidia uh, but otherwise i wouldn't be messing around trying to short these stocks you get a five point move like this right which we got then it was moving up before the sell-off started so now we have a beautiful opportunity to add to this and i know many of you did and the calls are cheap it's not like Priceline where you got to sell a house to buy a call on Priceline, right? Unless you buy my long dated, I mean, uh, uh, way out of the money ones when I project the stock and they, they really run. Priceline's been a fantastic winner. You guys know that? Actually, most of you probably don't know that because you weren't in there. Now, I know Don asked me about Priceline and I said, no, not at this point. Because I recommended Priceline way back. Wasn't even that long ago. Like last week, when the week before. But they were $30, $40, $50 out of the money. Not only did they hit that strike, they went well beyond that. My big, my most longest strike was, you can look that up, was 1990. And the way did the stock go? Does anyone know where Priceline went to? Just quickly. Okay, Priceline went to 2043. So you're talking a 50, you know, you're talking about a 53 point move. So obviously those lotos that you can buy at two, that's Priceline lotos, not $1, right? Unless you're playing the lotos on the same day. Two, four, six dollars, you know, they went to that 42, they went to around 44, 50. Okay. Not the $2 ones, but the four, uh, the $6 ones went here. I think they sh shot up here. I was mostly out of these levels and before that. Because I'm not going to be sitting there saying, oh, it's going to go to 50. So let me just hold on to it forever. Take staggered profits along the way. I wish I had a big chunk and I just sat on it. But hey, it's a volatile market. I, I, I can't do that. So NVIDIA, for example, to me is uh, a good tactical buying opportunity. Which brings me to my next and most important point. Which applies to all of you, including me. These are vicious markets. And the computers are day trading against you, with you dating you dumping you so if you're not if you're not tracking my charts or replicating these charts on your side in the simplest way these are the most simple ones okay then i don't know how to help you because the reaction time is a lot quicker when you have that chart on your side and then by the time i put it through it's still, your reaction time is already there, but that spike could already be up here when you could have bought down here if you're looking at your own screens. So bottom line is that these type of markets, we are dealing with, uh, again, I you know, keep on repeating the same thing over and over again. We are dealing with a massive supercomputer. And that supercomputer is, is just gonna be horrendously fast we can never keep up with it 
but we could, but at least you can react to it if you're mimicking my charts or at least understanding it so you know what the levels are and what you can do. Otherwise, please do not trade these markets. Just to buy a couple of my swing stuff, shut the monitor off and come back you know, a couple of days, like look at it or follow the tweets and just move on from there. Do not attempt to trade these type of markets if you are not prepared mentally as well as tactically. And just that's that's fair warning. It's tough on me. I can just imagine what is on you guys. Um, this is your e-minis, real time, one hour chart. Uh, this is where we are right now. We closed here. Now we have given back a whole bunch of it. Futures are down roughly about nine points, uh, primarily on the tech sell-off, in my opinion. We have that big fat line here, 2451, we have to contend with. I do not want it to go there necessarily to retest right away. But we have a we have the consolidation channel, right? This line here. And that consolidation channel is approximately 2457. Bear with me one quick second. I'll be back in about 15 seconds. So um, I'm back. So at this point, that consolidation channel, it's kind of meets right here on this uptrend line, 2455. And if we break that, then that's a, that's, that's a trend, uh, short-term trend change, right? So we'll see what happens. Um, what else can I tell you guys? The other thing to keep in mind is, uh, let me just pull down Amazon here. It's right on my other screen. Hold on. And I wouldn't recommend you guys try to trade Amazon. It's going to be very fast, very furious tomorrow. And um, but it, I've shown my levels where it's you know Amazon's not breaking. I shouldn't say not. It can break a thousand, uh, but it's going to be nine ninety is a major floor. Let me just pull this uh, up. Amazon, Amazon. Bear with me. Okay, here it is. There you go. Okay, so this is where we are. Now, this I didn't draw after the fact. This was drawn before the fact, and I hope some of you guys actually saw the Amazon chart, which I drawn uh, well before, where where it can go, what it can do, and it's right there. Okay, and this was uh, uh, these were drawn uh, before uh, the markets, and I kind of reposted them. I don't know if any of you guys uh, saw it, but anyway, it's right there. It's a one-hour chart, deep oversold, deep oversold conditions, all after-hour selling. Stock drops. Well, this the, the drop was from here, I believe. Well, what did, what did the stock close at? The stock closed at. Last was 10.14, but where did the stock close at? Does anyone remember? Okay. I don't remember. So all I know is this is the one-hour chart. This is where we are with Amazon, and there's a big buffer zone here between 1,000, 1,010. If we break that, the next level of support comes in around uh, 990, 990. If it breaks 990, then that's a different story. I always know one thing about Amazon. I've been trading this stock for many, many years. They'll always buy this. And the cheaper it gets, they'll buy it more. Companies like Amazon, Priceline, Netflix, Tesla, Facebook, to name a few, Google, never go out of style. Because there are no competitors to them. They are the sole monopolies in their own business. So when people try to, if, if, if somebody could find me a replacement, I've said this before, and this is the way Wall Street thinks. This is the way mutual fund managers think. Forget about hedge funds. Hedge funds are nothing but dogs. They just want to trade the market like crazy, which is fine. They're the ones who create most, uh, almost all the volatility in the market. But the actual money managers and the long-term investors and such, 
they are always going to buy these stocks unless the company loses its mojo and its monopoly in that sector like Chipotle has for now, right? And um, and, and, and and the bottom line is that they, that's when they, they become fallen, you know, the, the, the fallen giants, the fallen angels. But Amazon, far from that. So in the worst case scenario is 950. I would love to see the stock at 950. I'll buy it with both hands down and whatever. But again, the tactical levels are very much in place. Uh, 999 could be the panic sell tomorrow. It's around 999, 996. I'll be alerting people. I'm not going to be asking people to trade this stock. You got to be quick. But I know there's some decent money to be made because the option premiums are going to be washed out, right? Friday. So there's no real time value left. So small bits played at a time can be extremely profitable for Friday lottos like we normally do. And Amazon is a prime candidate for that. So again, um, that's basically it. I, I'm, I'm here to answer any quick questions and then wrap this up because I don't want to continue the you know, two hours and stuff that I normally do. But I do have some fantastic videos out there. Um, and I have fantastic uh, uh, the candlestick pattern video. Mandatory. Got to watch it. Got to see it. It's, I mean, it is so explanatory. It is beautiful. Um, and, and, and then, of course, my real-time videos uh, are there. There's a lot of material. It's up to you guys to absorb it. But in the meantime, uh, let me answer a question or two on anything that you guys want to ask, please. Yeah, just... can, can you look at Goodman's that, uh, Goodman Sachs uh, chart? Yeah, I'll do it on the toss side. Uh, I use Goldman Sachs on the, my algo, uh, uh, algo charts much better. But uh, the daily won't tell you anything. Actually, will tell you a lot of things. Uh, the daily is telling you right now. Look, Goldman is a – how do I explain this? Goldman's not the best day trading stock or, or real high momentum stocks unless you catch it at certain inflection points. I just want to make that clear with everybody, okay? Go, I love the options because they're cheap and they move. But if you're trying to trade Goldman like a Tesla, which moves three, four, five bucks on either way and mostly on the upside uh, from those lows that we caught, which was at 303, it's much better playing that. Goldman's a financial company. It's going to be affected by what's happening with the 10-year government yield, uh, all kinds of stuff. So this is the chart on Goldman. On the daily, it's fantastic. Nice crossover about to happen. Um, you got to move up to with the 225 level. This stock chart itself will tell you nothing how to trade it, and that's why I don't show it. I show you the one that really matters, which is on the, on the Algo HFT one. Go look it up. I'm sure you're trading off that one instead of this. Now, look at the one-hour chart here. And let's say I uh, clear the whole thing, okay? And the one-hour is fantastic. You know, it's getting, it's getting to be a crossover right here. I love it, okay? So you're going to get a move up towards the 150, which is 224.32, the 150 uh, SMA moving average on the hourly, and I believe they're going to find some major resistance here. This is fantastic. This is telling us that it wants to go higher. But when I say Goldman wanting to go higher, it's not like 15 bucks, you know? So here's your head, left shoulder, right shoulder. Here's your neckline, 224, maximum 225. And that's where they're going to sell the stock. Now, what selling doesn't mean they're going to completely crash and burn. Or let's say, for example, tomorrow morning, uh, Mnuchin and, uh, and uh, 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 what do you call our uh, Secretary of Treasury and some other guys from his team come out and tell us about all the different changes that they're making to help ease the burden on financial uh, banks, which is basically pushing out the Dodd-Frank rule or taking out good chunks of it. Goldman's going to jump. Jump huge, which it did before. But till you get those external catalysts, the stock is going to it appear trading stock. So you got three points here, which is a nice options trade, no question about it. And if you see a breakout based on that external news that I'm uh, that uh, that you know that I'm projecting will come any day now, then you were you're going to see that move from 225 to 231 happen within one 
or two days. And that's going to be obviously a very powerful day in the market. Okay, so but that only will happen if we get a big fat candle breakout similar in pattern to this. This was the breakdown, a breakout here on this side, and you're going to see a, a one to two day move. And of course, I'll be learning people, but generally speaking, this is a major resistance level 224. That's it. So I don't consider Goldman other than certain days like this when we caught it. I think this was a good buy today. Um, as a major trading stock, intraday. But if you place yourself right within a couple, or a day or two, or two or three days, you make some real decent money. The other thing that I like here is a crossover of the 3450. The orange line has crossed over the 50-day moving average. Once the 50-day mo moving, this is not day, this is hourly chart, obviously, but the 50 SMA, simple moving average, starts to curl higher. This will be dragged higher. And Goldman will basically bounce off these lines. And then if it breaks this, it's going to do this. So if somebody's setting themselves up, the real setup comes on the breakout between 224 and 225. Next question. No one? Dan, no question? Or he left? Dan, anything? Because I'm not going to go too in depth. I'm just going to cover a couple of quick stocks. I, I believe we have a couple of very strong movers after hours on earnings. Have a little bit of Baidu. That stock is uh, that stock ramped up $13. Um, and um, oh wow, it ramped up uh, yeah $13 and change. And uh, right now is at 210. After, don't always rely on after hours stuff. That's another day story. That's on for a real ACS coaching. After hours trading can be extremely lucrative because of the massive movements that happen from you know the reversals. Look at Facebook. I wrote at 3.59 p.m. in the chat room that the first move on Facebook will be a crash. It was, down seven. Immediately turned around. I put out the chart. I mean, that should go in the museum, seriously. I basically said that, I even projected out, I'm sure you guys saw it, I wrote 174 here. Guess what the stock went after hours? 173 and change. 174. A 174 yeah. exactly now who's the who, yeah. who which service do you know which tells you the stocks gonna crash first and then go to 174 okay i don't really care i don't really care okay because i i didn't rely on other services i rely on my brain so that's what happens now we have a red candle here which is kind of a mixed signal mixed signal and uh, but it still has upside up to 181 it still has upside 181. So if we didn't have this sudden tech flash crash today, we would have been right now sitting uh, close to uh, um, uh, uh, close to 181. But it's still projecting higher. It's like a red Chinese firecracker, right? I'd like to see this green. Uh, but then at the same time, uh, you did see a lot of selling. The selling, the volume was severe. So there's some serious profit takers on this today. Does it mean Facebook is dead? No. The charts are intact. The channels are intact. It simply means there were a lot of sellers. There was a lot of sellers here on capitulation. And look what happened three, uh, a couple of days later. There's a lot of sellers. Uh, look at the volume here. And then one, two more days, and then it just took off. Bumped around and took off. And that was when it was at 112. Don't you wish you were sitting there from 112, right? So bottom line is right. that uh, capitulation volumes I like. Capitulation volumes means washouts. I love washouts. I love when retail traders get washed out, meaning mentally washed out, and they're all screaming and shouting, which not, not many of you are doing these days, which is a really good sign. It scares me. I should be the one, you know, screaming and shouting. Uh, but uh, that's really good. I did that poll today, trader poll, and uh, more than 76% of, of traders at uh, Clueless Trading said they, that they were more focused on the tactical stuff. I'm like, wow. You know, and then and rightfully so, 20 percent said that they were really scared, which is also understandable. So that's a good poll. And I'll do these polls like once a week or so um, to get a feeling on what, what's what's going on. But anyway, so uh, the, the, the daily charts are fine. Uh, but then again, um, uh, we could see a retest of 166 because that's the upwardly rising uh, five, uh, five, uh, five day moving average. So, uh, so that's another one. Uh, uh, let me see. Dan's writing. Sorry, I can't talk to you to the mic. Okay. Um, 
I observed the inverse head and shoulder S&P in the June time frame area depth 245 to 2445. That's accurate. Then move from here could put us at 2485 where we bounced today. Yeah, that's a good read. But isn't that what I just explained 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago? Yeah, I agree with you. That's, 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 you know, like I said, then uh, when I answered back to your uh, uh, private message the other day, I look at charts. I'm not that smart enough to take, you know, do this all wave counts and this and that. I'll leave it to all the smart people to do that. I look at charts. I draw the lines. And guess what? 99% of the time, it gets there, up and down. So what you're saying is absolutely correct. But my charts are already on the SPX showing. And let me pull up the SPX. I think that will be helpful. Uh, and I just explained to, to everyone a few minutes ago that that's where I think the projected move is going to be towards the 2485 level where we were at today. But once it gets to 2485, it doesn't stop at 2485. It has an overshoot. And that overshoot takes it up to 2490. And that's where we basically stall. So here is a beautiful chart. We are starting to see negative divergence here. Negative divergence on the daily take at least seven to 10 days to work out, just so you guys know. And I believe I explained that very, very clearly on one of the advanced coaching sessions that many of you sat on, okay? Negative divergences on the daily, which is this, which is this, okay? Crossover down, nothing that wild, but this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna eventually have to, have to come down and 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 eventually have to come down and uh get towards the 30 zone on a daily you very seldom get rsi below 20. now listen to this for you guys because i teach all this on the advanced coaching sessions all right so if you get below 20 rsi on the daily you want to buy with like hands feet fingers like whatever down that's big Generally, you stick around the 30 level and above 20 and you get a bounce. OK, so that's because the stochastics is the first derivative of the relative strength index. That's what is derived from. All right. So the root is the R relative strength index parameters. So saying all that, look at this uh, a very nice chart that I had drawn and shown to you guys uh, quite a few times. And I shall show it to you guys again. Here's your macro breakout. Now. Tell me something. <coughs> Do you see anything wrong with this picture, despite what happened today? Actually, S&P wasn't even hurt. It was only down you know, 0.1%. But do you see anything that's wrong with this picture yet? Somebody just point out and say, yes, I see something really wrong with this picture. You know, I can see it. Does anyone see anything wrong with this picture till 2503 or so on the S&P 500? Please. Um, no, I don't. Yeah. No, Dan, you're cool, man, because, yeah, I agree with you. I, that's, we'll talk about it on ACS, uh, about your perma bear psychology. That's what's kept you poor in the doghouse since 2009. So uh, believe me, I know I do not relate to it because, you know, it's just the way it is. But that's OK. Um, all right. So somebody else step in. Guys, at this at this point, at this point, we actually got an automatic buy alert. Somebody please mute the microphone. It looks like they're swimming with the sharks or something. Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so looking at the weekly chart, it's nothing but bullish. This little arrow that was generated on the 24th, which is it's a weekly chart, right? The 24th was a Monday. Is telling. If so, it's, it's, it's a script, some think or same script, right? It's telling you to buy the market at this frigging level. And it's absolutely correct because we are going to go to around 2503, 05. So if we don't get 2500 by, let's say, August 4th, I'm going to buy some cheap calls for the week after. Because I believe mid-August is going to be real turbulence. What is real turbulence? 300 points, 400 points. Okay. 700 points? I doubt it, but we'll see. I don't think they let the market go down 700 points yet. So bottom line is, this is defined. Here's your macro bull flag. It's more of an ascending wedge. Please listen carefully, and because this is the last thing I'll explain. And you can see that. This is your breakout. This is your previous high. We broke out of that on the 17th. So what is this called, this pattern?
this is known as a ascending triangle. Okay, it looks like this. Ascending triangle. When stocks or, or markets break out of an ascending triangle, this is your triangle. This is your triangle, right? And we broke out of that on the 17 and stayed above that on the 24th and heading towards the 2500 level. Once you break out of an ascending triangle, you don't want to be like, you don't want to be swing shorting anything. Okay? It's, it's dangerous. Can you, of course, you're going to short intraday. You can short intraday and made a gazillion. I was not fast enough to do it. I'm the first one to admit. So that's a bunch of profits from the other side. I was maintaining some positions on this side. So I was like, you know, didn't get a chance to react. Big deal. So bottom line is, but I showed everybody what they need to do. I told people to watch the VIX. So I have great traders who don't hang out in the chat room who use my tools, my charts, to trade what they want. And God bless them. I bet you some of them went and bought the crap out of the UVXY. And that because I showed that if, the, if it breaks above this level, it's going to run. And that's what it did very, very quickly. So you don't always wait for my tweet alert. You can look at my tools. He's telling, I'm telling you that, okay, if the VIX breaks over 980, 990, 10, it's going to run. It started running. So you act on your own. You don't have to wait for me. Use me as a valuable resource. Don't use me like I'm sleeping next to you, which is a pretty nasty thought. But the point is that. Think about it for a minute here. I am there to help you. I cannot take the spoon and feed you. So I'll put my alerts out. Do not expect me in a volatile market like today to react to every movement that's going on. My charts are there to tell you this is where you go in to short in the case of the VIX and you know what you need to buy. I just want to be very clear about that. And it's going to help you guys make you more money. So bottom line is, and I'm the first one to admit today that I didn't react fast enough didn't really bother me. It pissed me off a little bit because those puts, I didn't even look at them, must have gone gazillion. They probably were up like 200%. The, 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 the June 28 SPX puts. So saying all that, there's nothing wrong with this chart. Nothing. At, at around this level here, we have a zone. And this is where the market, I think, is going to hit a high. And if we break above that, for whatever reason, believe me, bull markets do funny stuff. Powerful breakouts have happened from nowhere. We have seen that repeatedly. When nobody thinks it can go, it goes. Okay? So if this breaks out, it is possible. They lay out some real strong tax reform on the corporate side. They lay out uh, uh, a, a half-decent uh, health care plan. They lay out this and that. Trust me. That's going to be the ultimate death of the dogmatic shorts. And then we can short. It's a fact, because by the time the shorts give up, throw in the towel, is when the markets start to ease. In the meantime, short position, the market is still very high. And every little tactical dip, they're getting squeezed. And they don't like it one bit. So on days like today, you get monster reversal candles, which, which, which I posted out there. What's that? That's the tactical shorts covering, saying, boo, just got a lottery ticket, man. Wow, look at this. I got to take it. So there's nothing wrong with this. You got a, uh, a, a weekly bull flag rising wedge. We're above it. A, a actual buy <laughs> signal has been generated by think or swim. That's not my arrow, by the way. And then you got the, uh, uh, then you got the yellow line, which is a nicely upwardly trending. That's our trader's friend, right? The 5 SMA. The 5 SMA right there. Still climbing higher. These are moving up nicely. The 50, I said that in a previous ACS session too. I'm mentioning it here. It's kind of flattish. That's the first danger sign. It should be curling higher. Um, the, the, the blue line is the 20-day simple moving average. That's also moving up nicely. But I'm following the five because the five is the one that makes you those nice fat tactical SPX are you SPX spy calls or puts. All right. It breaks the five and all of these start to, you know, it, if it starts breaking one after another. And that was another consolidation channel that broke out. And I told you guys to buy it. So this is where we are. 
Now there is one other uh, uh, line that I can draw, which is this there that projects up to 2550. So when the if the bulls really go wild, bulls gone wild, right? Like that guy used to make the uh, stupid video made like millions of dollars. Girls gone wild. So how about bulls gone wild? Okay, uh, you are looking at a max move on the market of 2561. Can it happen? It sure can happen. Believe me when I tell you. Energy can make it happen. I love the energy sector here. Okay? I told you all was going to go higher. I showed it on my tactical charts. I'm not going to waste time. I mean, I'm not going to spend time looking at that now. You guys can look it up. It's all on my on, on the media section, on the Twitter feed. Scroll down. The Saudis want oil at 60. They'll get there at 60. Never mess with big money. Okay? And power. We know that. So that's it. So oil's going higher. So if oil's going to go higher, the energy sector picks up. Tomorrow we have big earnings from Exxon and Chevron, I believe. Those are big Dow components. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Now, what what's it called? Uh, uh, what came out of the day? Uh, one of the the foreign oil companies, one of the big giants, and they just went. They they had huge profits. So would be surprised that they cut costs and they they show some strong profits. Exxon and Chevron, some of the finest companies in the world here in the U.S. Sure, that's going to move the Dow. So that's it. Shell, Shell, Mike, thank you. Shell came out. Yep, and and posted some real strong numbers. I'm not a I'm not an oil analyst. I I know the macro global factors that drive oil. The political factors, but I, I I don't know the internals of each of these shell and XR or anything like that. Uh, MRO, I like it. I'm not going to waste time doing this. I put enough charts on MRO. I think the stock is cheap, and the freaking calls are like, I bought them at at at, at lows today, at uh, um, and that's the last thing I'll tell you. There's so many of these little lottos that are up like 300 percent. I gave you guys Skyworks. SK, uh, 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 SWKS, 15 cents, thing went to a dollar. Even today it was ramping um, before the sell-off. And, and, and I bought uh, the, this MRO yesterday closed at 22 cents. I originally bought it at 32 cents. I kept on pulling it down. It was trying to break through the 50-day moving average, pulled back a little bit. No big, big deal for me. That's standard procedure for a stock coming off such, such a climactic bottom trying to break through the 50-day moving average, which I showed on my charts on the first time. And uh, and it'll fail. That's okay. So today, bought more at 16 cents, 17 cents. It closed at, went to 25 cents. Closed at the day's high at 22 cents. So guys, I want you to sort of go into your brain a little bit, right? And, 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 and recalibrate. A lot of the times I'm posting all these small lottos of real companies. They're not garbage companies, right? And you guys never touch them. You guys are so obsessed with the Teslas, the Googles, and stay. And, and a lot of the times you guys are not buying those tactical levels and you're getting slapped around big time. Stop doing that. I'm showing you guys Skyworks. I'm showing you uh, uh, MRO. Um, I'm showing you uh, some cheap calls on, um, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, you know, I show a whole bunch of them here and there, okay? I'm showing you two of the more specific ones. Yeah, I showed you guys, uh, what was it? It'll come to me in a second. Oh, EOG. Look at EOG, bright green today for my book too. EOG was up 1.4%. Enron Oil and Gas, one of the finest companies in America. In the world. Okay, EOG. Did anyone buy EOG? I don't need answers. You tell yourself. I bought it at a buck sixty, buck seventy. The thing closed at two dollars and thirty-three cents. Two ten to be exact as the last print, but the bid and ask is two seventeen by two thirty-three. If a sixteen cent on MRO goes to twenty-five cents, you're making nine bucks on a sixteen dollar call. That's the way you gotta look at it. Recalibrate your brain, guys. Repeatedly, I'm showing three, four hundred percent on these little lottos, but when I ask, nobody's like, "Oh no, I'm not in there." Like, what are you guys doing? 
in a way, stop trading these wild, crazy movers, which are just randomly run by these hedge funds, because and 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 you're not fast enough to trade these, or good enough to look at my tactical charts and say, okay, this is the level I'm getting at the getting in there, and it's not like it's going to go exactly there. Maybe it's a dollar off. If you don't have the speed and management, don't trade those things, guys. I know it's very sexy and lucrative to trade a Tesla. You know, maybe it's a cocktail party. You're like, oh yeah, I trade Tesla all the time. You know, uh, I made a lot of money. I made two hundred percent on that thing. Forget it. Fifty-six percent from sixteen cents to twenty-five cents. Fifty-six percent intraday while the market was getting sold off. Got it. Guys, got to recalibrate. Okay, so, and and I know that some some traders are just so obsessed with only trading the Googles and stuff of the world. Well, my charts are great. I'm there showing you all the levels. I cannot tell you when you have a flash sell program or something that's going to come, but you got to think a little bit differently. You got to trade other things too, because net net you'll make more money. And this is coming from a guy who loves trading these, you know, I'm an aggressive trader. This ain't grandpa's market, I ain't grandpa. So the bottom line is I'm trading aggressively for max, um, profit maximization. That's my motto. But if I'm getting these things, which are, I'm buying at 20 cents, selling them at a dollar, selling them at a dollar fifty, to me, the percentage moves are huge. On that note, guys. Have a great evening. Let's uh, catch up tomorrow. Futures are down about seven and a quarter. They'll do exactly what I said it's going to do today. The reason I say it with so much confidence, because in my stupid, clueless head, every time that I've projected these things, this is not the first time, it's happened exactly the same. Now, unless something else happens, another black swan event, which we don't know, then we will be revisiting those lower levels that we talked about specifically, and we should be ready for that. Fair enough? But so far, this is where we are as I leave you guys tonight. And I don't see anything that dramatic aside from the fact that I know that we can retest here, we can retest there. But in a very simple way, the final word I'll say, these are uptrending bull flag channels. They are all for now intact. Have a great evening. God bless you all. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning.